fucked, missus. F-U-C-K-E-D, fucked. Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season one, episode eight of The Haunting of Bly Manor. This episode is called The Romance of Certain Old Clothes. <sighs> I gotta tell you, it's been a good week, 10 days since I watched my last episode of Bly Manor. It's taken me that long to recover. I thought <sighs> six was, was bad enough, to be honest, but, um, but seven, five, six and seven really, like boom, 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 was just like, gutting you emotionally and I just I'm so impressed with this show's ability to find an artistic way of creating of recreating a feeling and I think for those um, people watching this who've actually experienced narcissistic abuse denial um, th those kinds of things, the way that the show is is creating the the emotional reality of being caught in that kind of mental trap. It, it, I have never seen, I, I just haven't, I've, I've not seen it done this well anywhere. I'm, I'm not even sure I've seen it tried to be done anywhere, if I'm honest. Just absolutely phenomenal. Um, acting performances off the charts, right across the board. Every single person is is acting their socks off. And the script, again, is just... I love the poetry of the narration from the storyteller, who I'm telling you is Jamie. I'm going to be shocked if it's not, but I'm, you know, I like a swerve. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my feelings going into this. Uh, what do I want from the final two episodes? I really want to see um, Viola Lloyd. I believe she's the lady in the lake and I want to know what her story is and how comes things are the way they are at Bly. Why can't ghosts leave Bly? Why is she killing living people who, who cross her path? And how is she even able to do that? Um, why are people's faces melting? Is it something to do with... Um, being forgotten is it literally just the passage of time um what else i really want henry to to make it back to bligh and to face his demons i feel like particularly with what's happened to dominic and charlotte i think his honesty right now is actually really, really important. You know, I, I think the kids are still young enough that I don't think they would go into a blame game with him for why the parents were in India and that sort of stuff. That's almost like a more teenage kind of reaction. Um, you know, and it would be nice to, to know both of them, not just for, I know Flora's biologically, um, his child but there's no reason he can't be a father figure to both of those children now in the absence of their parents um and i really want that for henry he's a great guy i i think he has made mistakes but jesus christ he has paid in full and then some for those mistakes i think his time in purgatory needs to end and while we're on the subject of purgatory peter fucking quint i need to see that scumbag piece of shit low life lower than a worm's tit cock sucking motherfucker dead dead and in in, in peter quint's case i need dead to mean gone i want his face to melt off <laughs> stop thinking about it about how terrified he would be with his face melting off so yeah i've i need peter quint vanquished from the earth 
permanently. He can haunt nobody ever again. Um, the, the scenes I am not looking forward to would be Owen finding out that Hannah is dead, but I think we need that scene. I think Hannah's going to kind of need to address her death with the people who think she's been alive all this time. I just cannot imagine the pain Owen's going to be in. And I was actually thinking about the parallel between Owen's relationship with his mum and Owen's relationship with Hannah. Because in one sense, both of them, they love him hard. Like, Hannah loves him so hard, she's not leaving. And, and she, whenever she's um, close to figuring, you know, working out her denial and breaking through that denial... It's Owen that she cleaves to. And I think that's because she cannot bear to let him go. Um, and ultimately that love tied Owen to Bly Manor in the case of his mum, but also in the case of Hannah. Because he would probably already be back in Paris now if Hannah wasn't at Bly. And I wonder if he would ever be able to leave knowing that she can't leave with him. I wouldn't even write it right off him preferring to stay at Bly with Hannah than live a life kind of anywhere else without her. And that's going to be some sad shit if, if that goes down. So there's a whole world of stuff that can, can go on there. And just everyone else's reactions. You know, what's Jamie going to say? You know, what's Danny going to say? I mean, obviously Danny's going to be kind of prep now because she's gone through the stuff at least with um, Rebecca and Peter that she she's up to speed on. There are ghosts here. But that's different from someone she's had a relationship with like can you even imagine being danny and being like oh you know the first time you met that person it was like seconds after they'd been murdered and you were just meeting you meeting them as a spirit what like what do you do with that information so i'm interested on the whole impact of that and where we go what's the future of danny and jamie because i believe jamie is the storyteller but where does that place Danny in all of this? I'm worried on the one hand that she's going to die. But on the other hand, I keep going back to the first episode and like the door was open in the hotel. There was a, in her hotel room, the bath was run and she'd just woken up. So there's like a part of me that just hopes that um, Danny's with her and you know she like meets back up with her somewhere after the wedding and is like oh i just told our story to a bunch of assholes at that wedding i had to go to today with all those wankers um <laughs> but again sweet summer child i'm i'm sure that i feel like that might not be the case <laughs> And obviously we did at the end of the last episode see Danny getting dragged by the throat um, courtesy of Lady of the Lake who I think is Viola Lloyd. We've not, we're not aware anyone has yet survived that. Um, and just while I bring up the Lady of the Lake again I wanted to go back because there were definitely additional skeletons at the bottom of that lake where Peter was. Like I think just off to the right um, I made out two skeletons, um, so what's that all about? Is that Viola Lloyd and a n other person maybe? I don't know. Um, but that's so that's that. Danny, is she alive? If not, what happened? And of course, then we've got the kids because they're saying miles. It's too late for miles. I'm unhappy about that. 
that that's how I felt for poor Nell in Hill House. Of like, yeah, it was a beautiful thing she did, but fucking hell. Like she really got the short straw in in that whole scenario. Absolutely the short straw. Um, so Nell's story was so bittersweet in that regard because she's an inspirational character because she chooses to be courageous, to be honest and to be forgiving and accepting um, of, of kind of her lot. But it's still fucking heartbreakingly sad that she was put in the position where she had to over and over and over again. So I'm really gutted for Miles if we've lost him um, permanently, thanks to that scumbag. Um, and then there's Flora, who I have actually genuinely fallen in love with um, through this season, which surprised the shit out of me, because I found her deeply annoying in the first episode and kind of spooky and creepy. But lots of things endeared me to her, but I don't think anything endeared me to her more than when she was talking... <laughs> when she was talking to Owen uh, just after his mum's funeral and she was explaining that when her parents died she thought she was dead and then she, it's just her little face when she said and then I realised I wasn't dead I was alive <laughs> and, you know I wasn't dead you're just I was just really really sad and it's just it gets me every time I must have watched that scene fucking umpteen times by now and I'm still crying every time I see it it's just such a perfect performance by that child actor and I just it it's her little face I j oh I love her um but I was really angry at her at the end <laughs> that said I was really angry with her at the end of the last episode because uh, you know with everything that had just happened can't she just get in the car you know, I don't understand why she was suddenly screaming. Um, so that kind of upset me a bit because Danny was legit trying to save her. Um, and now it's the lady in the lake for Danny. So, yeah, we are where we are. Um, but I guess let's go get some answers. Let's have at it. Toward the middle of the 17th century. Yes! Yes! Really hoping at some point we get a flashback. To, to find out who is the lady in the lake. Um, and I will say now, if, if, if it is Viola Lloyd, and if it is played by Kate Wasserchops, who was Theo last time round, I'm going to be fucking ecstatic. That's all I'm saying. I have no idea what's going to happen, but that's my dream. Two daughters, born at an interval of five years apart. The elder, Viola, the younger Perdita. With their father in the ground, they faced a dire necessity for marriage. Women in that time had nothing. No present, no future, without a tie to a man. It's fucking insane. My the God. two sisters were at this time in all the freshness of their youthful bloom. Perdita in her sweetness, Viola in her wit, and Viola, of course, in the finest of dresses, always. Among the young men, their friends and neighbours, there were many excellent fellows. But Viola knew them for what they were. Gluttons, opportunists, mm. vultures. Thus led to Viola's invitation to a distant cousin, one Mr. Arthur Lloyd. Ah. He was in reality no paragon. Wow. Viola had made certain to be absent when he arrived. And just as Perdita began to feel the stirrings of a true interest in the young man. Oh no. Oh, yeah. In fact, every detail of Viola's entrance was a pageant. The sweat from her eye, the wildness of her hair. Even the portrait hanging beyond, commissioned by Viola's, part of a true message to Arthur. There should be no mistake in the true authority of Bly Manor nor the way things would be done. Wow. To love, cherish, till death us depart. <laughs> and obey. To love, cherish, and obey. Not gonna happen, sir. The transaction done, the business concluded, 
the man is saved. Young Viola turned her eyes inward. She would sleep. She would wake. She would walk. Just like now. She would sleep. She would wake. She would walk. Viola found that under its purpose, her marriage may have some amount of love to it after all. <laughs> Baby. Baby. Vi belongs to you, and they will try to take it from you as they did me. But I will not let them. Instead, we shall move mountains, my girl. It is you. It is me. It is us. Oh my god. What? Nothing holds, and all things change given time. Change does not often announce itself. It does oh, not trumpet its arrival. Shit. No, change is emergent. Shit. This is gonna get messy. As for Viola, <coughs> her suspicion began as small, as inconsequential as the tickle in her lungs. Ah, oh, fuck off. Impossible, finally, to ignore. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> <sighs> Fucking plague, Doctor. It is not the plague. Oh, thank God. <sighs> but it is not good news. She has the lung. Oh. How long, Doctor? Months. Months at the most. And I would keep her separate from the rest of you. Cure her. I do not know that I can. You will. You will. Oh, God. Fucking leeches and all. <laughs> oh! Bloodletting. Oh, fuck all of that. Say the words after me. I go and prepare a place for you. She's not going anywhere. No. What did you say? Just tell your God that I do not go. God wants her soul to be pure as he welcomes her heart. God should know better. She is as he made her. If she says she will not go, she will not. Five times round the sun, and all is different. Isabel. Dear. Viola had surpassed the predictions of the physicians and priests alike. <coughs> like a ghost haunting their lives isn't she that's what their experience of it is i think she's got a really raw deal herself i can dance with my own husband <laughs> i don't need you to take that on that or anything else some in the village would say that death had come for viola nightly in fact denied at the door of bly manor but denied so often in fact that it would not venture to Bly Manor again. Ah. <coughs> okay, I get it. If he looks at me now and then, it is because he is lonely and he is human. It is because for the last five years, the only husbandly duty he's fulfilled is that of mourning. Don't. Think of Isabel. 
What will she be left with? What memories of you will she carry? Will it be this, this version of you? Because Viola with love, let it be anything else. I'm with Ferdy. She summoned to her room all of the jewels and clothes she had accumulated in her days before the sickness. Jesus Christ, this is horrific. My rings and my lace and my silk. I can say without vanity now that I am done with them. They will be a great inheritance for our daughter. Promise me that you will keep them for her, that you will keep the key, and you will never give it to anyone except our child. Promise me. Well, I promise you. But that night, as Perdita beheld her sister, a thought occurred to her. The word had come to her a full year prior, and like the tickle in Viola's lung, it had grown in the secret places. <clears throat> The word had eclipsed her thoughts at night and waken as well. She's gonna kill her. Until the word came to live in her hand. Oh my god. The word was mercy. And the word was a lie. Because it wasn't mercy. It had always been enough. Oh shit. She's Oh, shit! She's gonna haunt the shit out of you. There is no way on this earth that you murder someone who has told God himself to fuck off. They were married, as was becoming with great privacy. Oh my God. During the first three years of their marriage, the new Mrs. Lloyd failed to become a mother in her own right. And her adopted daughter refused at every turn to see her as a mother. Oh, wow. She's watching you, mate. She had long since ascertained that her sister's immense wardrobe had been sequestered for the benefit of her daughter. It was a revolting thought that these exquisite fabrics should await the commands of... Pause. She's not the faceless woman in the attic, is she? Perdita? Ah, oh, yes! That would be horrible. She's just stuck up there in a fancy dress. Fucking nowhere to go. It might not be, but it just struck me that that would be like a just desserts kind of situation from Viola's point of view. Play. A little girl. If she could have foreseen how dire things would become, how dire you have made things. Me? Yes. But were you not responsible for our financials, dear husband? Did you not run our estate into the damned ground? It is a promise. An oath. To Viola? Of course. We mustn't dispose of an oath to Viola. Yes. Mm. Don't do it. You are fucked, missus. F-U-C-K-E-D fucked. <laughs> 